Welcome to Basics of Noise and its Measurement. Last week we had been discussing uh, uh, this uh, discrete Fourier transform and we developed the expression for it and we also did some examples. We also covered the topic of uh, reverse or inverse Fourier transform. And then at the concluding part of last week, we had started discussing about uh, what kind of considerations should we have, should we factor into when we go around selecting different pieces of equipment for noise measurement. And specifically, we had discussed uh, about uh, analog to digital converters and specific to that, we had discussed uh, something uh, related to whether it is a 10 bit device, 12 bit device and how the res resolution of this device depends on the bit, uh, I mean what kind of bit uh, device uh, that converter is. So that is what we had covered. Then there are some, uh, so what we will do today in this particular lecture is we will continue that discussion for another 5-7 uh, minutes and then we will discuss some other considerations in uh, context of uh, selecting instruments as pertaining to noise measurements. So, so one consideration which we had was for A to D converters, so one consideration was uh, uh, number of bits, but then uh, an A to analog to digital converter something like this it has several other parameters and uh, which we should uh, certainly look at. So the second parameter is what kind of sampling frequency uh, it can support. So, so if you are looking at uh, a noise where your peak, uh, your uh, maximum frequency may be something like 20,000 hertz, then your sampling frequency should uh, certainly be above 40 hertz based on Nyquist criteria and to make things more accurate and you have several cycles of uh, that uh, noise, your sampling frequency should be maybe even higher, maybe 80 kilohertz or something like that. So sampling frequency is important from that standpoint. Then the other thing is that if you are expecting your signal to be let us say plus minus 10 volts, then there is a parameter associated with device that is known as full scale range. Okay. So this will tell you what is the maximum uh, value of voltage it will be able to measure. So if you are expecting plus minus 10 volts in your actual signal and if the device supports only plus minus 5 volts, then it will be no good, maybe it may even get damaged. And several times uh, the full scale range may vary, may vary, it may be something for AC currents or AC signals and another thing for DC signals. So uh, again, so you have to look at that. A lot of times some of these A to D converters, they also uh, uh, supply current that is known as excitation current. And typically this one I know that it uh, supplies somewhere between 4 to 10 milli amps of current. What is the use of this current? So earlier I had said that uh, your microphone several times it is connected to an external power supply it may be something like this, this is an external power supply. So you connect your microphone to this device. Now if you, if your microphone can be excited by this kind of supply current, then you do not need this particular device, you do not need. So all you need is this, so what this will do is it will supply that current to the microphone and also help it develop that polarizing uh, voltage and stuff like that. And simultaneously through the same cable, it will also get the signal back to measure the noise. 
so it supplies current and it measure, measures the voltage and uh, so this excitation so some of these ab converters do that some of them do not uh, if it does that then it in certain cases it may be helpful for you then another parameter is gain matching channel to channel okay so what is gain matching suppose you have an analog to digital converter and some of these converters can accept inputs from more than one microphone so this one can accept input from three microphones but some of them can take inputs from four microphones or some of them can take even more than that so now so these are the four inputs one two three four so you are connecting a microphone to mic one mic two so this this does not okay this is mic three so you are connecting three different or four different cables suppose you have four microphones so in one physical box there may be four different ad converters right and each of these ad converters is a, so is called a channel so there are four channels through which this conversion is happening and as this conversion is happening whatever is going in some signal also goes out and there may be some ratio between output to input okay ideally if the conversion is perfect this ratio should be unity so there should be no gain they should not it should neither get amplified or neither should it get reduced but in reality nothing is uh, you know perfect in reality so this gain of each channel may vary from one channel to other okay so you may want to look at this gain and what this device says is that the gain is going to be uh, at the most 25 difference between channel to channel the difference of this gain will be something like 25 milli decibels okay so what is 0 decibels 0 decibel corresponds to a gain of 1 right db is equal to 20 log and in this case let's say v2 over v1 if v2 over v1 is 1 then this decibel this is suppose this is your gain then this gain will be 0 so if it is 25 milli db this means is 25 into 10 to the power of minus 3 right this is equal to 20 log v2 over v1 so v2 over v1 equals 10 to the power of 25 into 10 to the power of minus 3 over 20 and this is pretty close to 0 so it's fairly close to 1 but so this number the lesser this number is the better it is okay then another parameter is phase matching phase matching okay so what is phase matching again you have signal 1 coming in it will have some amplitude and some phase you have signal 2 it will have another you know and you have to make sure that as a to d conversion is happening the phase of the signal does not change significantly and the change of uh, in phase should not vary from channel to channel also so so if i look at the specifications of this they are not printed here but in some separate literature uh, they are pretty low it's something like 0.045 degrees or something like that okay so that's pretty good it's it's not a significant difference of phase and uh and the uh, thing is flatness 
this is another thing which is flatness and uh, and the last one is 8 passband frequency okay passband frequency so what does uh, passband frequency yeah so what does this mean this means that i should be able to sense something which is in below this frequency and for this it is specified as 0.4 fs and for this particular device fs was what was it i think i don't remember this but i think it was something like 50000 hertz so passband frequency was 20000 hertz okay and then there are more parameters but I think these are some of the important parameters and once you do this couple of times you will become comfortable but at least in the beginning it is important that when you go start doing these kind of measurements you should look at every single parameter of the device and understand it for yourself as to what that particular parameter means. So now what we will do is we will discuss some other important considerations as we are selecting the equipment for uh, measuring noise. So what I will do is I will again make the schematic layout. So that is my microphone okay. and this microphone is connected to a power supply. and and this is my analog to digital converter and the signal so this is not good so it's adc and the signal from adc goes to my data acquisition system which could be typically a laptop or a computer or a dedicated system and it will have some hardware as well as some software okay if the adc also supplies some excitation current and if that excitation current is sufficient for exciting my microphone and if I have the right type of connectors, then I do not necessarily need this power supply. Okay, so, okay. So this is uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is okay. So this is getting some external power. This is also getting external power because for all of these guys to run, they need some power, and this is also getting some external power. Okay. So, couple of important considerations. The first consideration is in a lot of cases what may be happening is let us say this DAQ data acquisition system could be a computer or a laptop and this external power may be coming from 220 volt supply. You may have a 220 volt supply and then inside the computer it converts it into DC but into the whole box you are actually getting 220 volt supply same thing may or may not be happening to ADC and also to power supply. So you can either run them purely based on a battery supply or you may use AC and then convert it to DC and then run these equipments. If you are using AC to run these equipments then sometimes if you are not careful you know so suppose my true signal so, so, so suppose there is no sound which is coming from here. So let us say the microphone is not seeing any sound. So when I measure this in reality if I, this is time and this is pressure of T as measured by the microphone in reality the actual signal should be flat right. But what may happen in reality is that you may see some
सम सॉर्ट ऑफ अ साइन सिग्नल और सम सॉर्ट ऑफ अ हार्मोनिक सिग्नल और इट मे बी अ सिग्नल एंड इट मे हैव अ फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ फिफ्टी हर्ड्स एंड दिस वैल्यू कुड बी लार्ज इन सर्टन केसेस इफ यू आर नॉट केयरफुल एंड वेयर दिस थिंग इज कमिंग फ्रॉम इज इफ ऑल दीज डिवाइसेज आर नॉट प्रॉपरली ग्राउंड okay if so so one thing is ensure good earthing every device should be properly grounded okay should be properly grounded a lot of times so what does that mean so first thing is that your electric supply for 220 volt supply so this is a plug this is the earth point this is one of them is phase so this is let's say earth this is phase and this is neutral right typically if your electric supply line is good then the voltage difference between uh, phase and neutral will be 220 volts or in some cases mid 210 240 in that range okay and between phase and earth will also be 220 volts and if the grounding is good if the grounding is good then between earth and neutral if it's a really good supply it should not be it should be less than at the most 2 volts at the most 2 volts if this voltage is large then you have a grounding issue if you have a grounding issue if you, you have a grounding issue and you have to solve this problem okay you have to solve this problem so you have to figure out how to solve this problem you have to go back and check everything is grounded correctly and physically this pin is actually connected to the physical ground and if it is not then you have to then it's a very expensive solution because you are uh, you have to get the actual grounding done correctly but unfortunately at least in our country a lot of times this earthing is not done properly so we get this noise and this noise is because of this uh, bad grounding so this so one way to avoid this problem because if you you, you cannot uh, uh, spend a lot of money in trying to make a very deep hole and uh, putting a conductor in it and filling it with salt and water i mean that is how they do all the grounding so one way to avoid this problem is that you use ups so what you, if you have a good ups you charge it up and if it can run for maybe few hours during the course of your experiment you charge it up connect all your equipment to ups and then disconnect physically the ups from 220 volt supply not just switch off the uh, plug but you actually remove the plug and disconnect it so it's not physically connected so that is one important way to ensure that your grounding is correct second cables okay a lot of times you will see that in your signal again i mean if you have if your microphone is not seeing any noise if there is no noise being generated no signal is coming so then once again as i mentioned earlier your actual signal should be like this this is my time and this is my pressure right but you may see some noisy signal and again this could be very large it could be small if the some amount of is the magnitude of this signal is sufficiently large that it starts bothering you then you should seriously think whether you have an emi electromagnetic interference issue or not okay what is emi so i'll just give you one example 
So, suppose in the neighborhood of your uh, equipment, you may have an electric motor running and there may be sparking going on inside the motor because that is how electric motor there is contact between conductors and it is not perfect, uh, you know, welded contact or soldered contact. It is like things are moving like this. So, there may be some gaps and sparking may go on or you may have a tube light which is running and there is also a uh, spark happening in tube lights also, okay. Or things like that or you may have general noise coming from a mobile phone or the universe is full of all sorts of electromagnetic interference noise, you know, electromagnetic noise. And what may be happening is that your cable, so what is a cable? It is basically a piece of wire and then it is surrounded by some insulator, okay, surrounded by some insulator. Now, this electro insulator is good for low frequencies, but high frequency noise which is in megahertz or gigahertz, those electromagnetic radiations, they just can directly come on onto the conductor from the air, okay. Those electromagnetic radiations, they can and they can then travel on the um, cable on the conductor and your microphone, uh, not microphone, your system will pick it up and this is what you will see. So, this is called EMI noise. So, one way is to make sure that not, uh, you know, these types of uh, machines which create arcs and things like that, they are not around. The second thing is that if you have a serious EMI issue, then you should think of using shielded cables. So, what is shielded cable? Shielded cable is basically you have a core. So, this is a conductor. Okay. Then outside the core, you have a layer of insulation. Then outside the insulation, you have a thin sheet of foil or mesh of wire or something. Okay. So, this is some metallic shield and in some cases or most of the cases that is then finally covered by a layer of insulation. Okay. So, this yeah. So, the conductor actually carries your signal which you are trying to measure. This insulation insulates the metallic shield and the conductor so that they do not touch each other and the metallic shield is basically like a shield, uh, not it is a shield which does not permit electromagnetic radiation to come in. If you go back to 12th standard physics, you will see that electromagnetic radiation cannot trans, uh, uh, penetrate easily into metallic structures. So, this is your protects you from protects you from electromagnetic noise. And then the final outside layer of insulation actually covers that, so that that is also insulated, so that it does not accidentally uh, touch some voltage source and develops a voltage of its own. An important point to note about is this thing is that this metallic shield, it should be grounded. Otherwise, it will have some floating voltage based on whatever EMI uh, and that will again generate noise. So, this should be grounded and, and all the grounds in your system, they should be connected to one single physical ground, one single physical ground. So, you may have a ground for 
a cable, you may have a ground for a box, you may have a ground for computer, but all of them ultimately they should be physically connected to one single ground. If that does not happen then some part is on some ground, another part is at some other reference level and that will create problems. So, this is important to understand. So, that is there. Last thing your electrical connections Okay. So, whenever we join two pieces of metal, if I have to run an electric bulb, lot of times we strip out wire, there is some conductor and we just twist it by hand and join two pieces of wire and then put it a tape, put a tape around it and that uh, connection works for an electric bulb. But never do that, never, never do that type of a connection for uh, taking measurements which we are trying to do here. Okay. Every single connection should be really soldered. Either it should be really soldered and you should follow this practice blindly or it should be crimped. Because what we are talking about is measuring data at extremely high frequencies 10,000 hertz, 20,000 hertz, several thousand hertz and these connections if they are not perfectly bonded together they may be doing this at very small time scales. But at those time scales and when this happens there is also arcing going on so it is generating its own noise and when this happens it generates its own noise and also the connections are you know physically becoming value may becoming 0 and non-zero. So, you may get totally absurd results. So, never use that regular thing which you try for uh, connecting two pieces of wire to light a bulb that kind of an approach should never be used. Okay. And every single electrical connection it should be good, it should be either soldered or it should be crimped it should be crimped. So, this is I cannot understate this I cannot say that this is not important or it is slightly less important a lot of times at least in my experience a lot of times people when they make these connections they just casually connect two pieces of wire and most of the times when they take measurements their results are absurd because they were not careful enough to take care of this consideration. So, these are some of the important considerations and then the last thing is about connectors. Okay. So, you have a cable it has to get connected to uh, a power supply or something like this and again whenever we use some connectors to join cable of one equipment to another equipment these connectors should be of high quality and the electrical connections in these connectors should be also either crimped or they should be soldered. There should not be there should not be any third option. Okay. So, these are some of the important considerations which will help you make uh, good uh, measurements in area of noise and vibrations and with this I will close this discussion today and starting tomorrow we will start a new series of topics and primarily we will be discussing about weighting and also about uh, uh, octave band analysis. Thank you and have a great day.